Jason is back. It's time to play a new Blaster Master game created by Imti Creates. In this review, I found out about how the game works and if it is worth buying. Please subscribe to my channel so you do not miss future reviews and other content. Even if the game is brand new, you should be aware that this is a game with a strong retro feel. It's as if the game would work great for the old NES system. Although the game is relatively large and extensive, it is clear in which direction the developers have looked. It is part of a trilogy and feels like a natural part of the Blaster Master universe, and there are many similarities to the Blaster Master that was released in 1988, and with that said, you know what you're getting. In terms of gameplay, much is the same. You drive around in your battle tank and shoot down various enemies until you have to jump out and go through a maze and eventually kill a boss. Despite the fact that it has been almost 35 years since the first Blaster Master game was released, it is still quite fun to see what Integrates has come up with. The story is about Jason, Eve and Fred the Frog, who are on the planet Sophia. On the planet, they are attacked by an army that causes the three to split up and Jason is imprisoned. Then chaos ensues and Jason manages to escape, but without his friends. His mission is to find Eve and Fred and try to find out what is going on. Just like in Metroid to Super Nintendo, you can now jump from wall to wall. Maybe not so innovative, but if you now have a jumping car, why not be able to jump from walls as well? What bothers me is every time you happen to jump into a wall instead of jumping over it. Then the tank slowly slides down to the ground. Quite annoying. Otherwise, the car works as it usually does in Blaster Master games. Jump, shoot, use cool sub-weapons and so on. Not very many new technologies. You will probably recognize some things from the older games. If you get bored, you can always jump a little trampoline. It's always entertaining, right? Many enemies in the game are familiar. I have no idea what they are called. But you have this guy, and this guy, and this guy, and this guy, and... Oh... Creepy clothes. Uh, not seen this one before. Quite easy to blow up, but I have always found clones unpleasant. The bosses are usually unique and cool. Some bosses are quite easy to kill, and you can basically just shoot until you win, but often they have some mechanic that makes the fight a little harder. For example, the clone of Eve. The fight itself is not very difficult, but the clones are pretty fast and you have to keep your distance, otherwise they will catch you and hurt you. Make sure to move constantly and the boss is soon eliminated. Other bosses require you to focus on killing the boss as quickly as possible before you lose yourself. I love such battles, because it makes the adrenaline pump. It is important to avoid the rotating gears while damaging the boss. There is a risk that the gears cause you to lose, but if you are just focused, you should win in the end. The map system is good. It clearly shows where to go and where to find portals, bosses or other interesting things. If you're wondering where you are, let me reveal that the frantically flashing blue ring shows your position. Pretty hard to miss, huh? To be extra clear, a red-yellow square has also been added. You are here. Not there. But here. Here you are. The game is not just about running around and shooting. It's actually a little tricky at times. You often have to solve puzzles to be able to reach certain objects or for doors to open. I think it is a nice aspect of the game and makes the game feel varied. It would have been monotonous if it was just a matter of walking around and shooting. But now it is quite interesting to explore the different environments. It can also be a little tricky to get hold of certain items. This is because among other things there are invisible walls that you can drive through. I had no idea that it was possible to drive through this wall, but apparently it worked to do so. As a reward, you got a new item. It is worth exploring all areas of the game by trying to find new pops. This allows you to find things that strengthen your battle tank or yourself. It is a pretty fun aspect of the game, to explore and search until you find something new. Even if a map shows where you are going and it reveals the most important goals in the game, it is still a good thing to take a moment and look around. 
Maybe you find something useful where you think you will not find anything. The control is quite awkward actually. This is because you have to turn around to aim and shoot. You do not use the right stick at all, which could have been a good idea to be able to do. At least I have not found any setting in the menu that allows you to choose. In Binding of Isaac you control with the left stick and shoot and aim with the right stick. A smart solution to be able to both move and shoot in the right direction at the same time. That is not how it works here, but the control is much worse. The result is that you cannot go backwards and shoot forward. Instead, you must first take a position that is go backwards and then fire. Perhaps this is something that Inti Creates should consider to change if they ever decided to make another Blaster Master game. If that ever happens. I think Blaster Master Zero 3 is a fun game with a simple and entertaining game idea. It is quite interesting to visit parallel worlds and see how the story develops. If you are used to the Blaster Master series, you know what to expect. There are few surprises that turn everything upside down and revolutionize, but the game is what it is and delivers what one expects from these types of games. Another perfectly okay game for the Nintendo Switch. If you are interested, the game costs 15 bucks in the Nintendo eShop. Have fun!